The next several episodes are extremely controversial. Many, especially former U.S. Methodist missionaries and their families, aren't really going to want to hear what these episodes say. This is a history that few people, even very few indigenous Bolivian Methodists, truly know. Former missionaries have put their spin on these events over the past five decades, and I feel it's important that the indigenous voices need to be heard. It should bring pride that they have had the courage to follow God in bringing autonomy, independence, and equality within the IMB. And, as we shall see, there are those who believe it laid the foundation for the indigenous revolution of 2006 which ended the Hacienda Patron apartheid rule in the nation of Bolivia. In 1966, there was so much confusion as to what was going on in the IMB in terms of membership. The IMB asked GBGM to help them to find out exactly what was going on within the church. So jointly, they hired Dr. John Hickman, an anthropologist, to conduct research studies and surveys on the work process of the Methodist Church in Bolivia to evaluate what was really going on within the church. His report came in in 1967 and came as no surprise to the Aymara pastors, but it was a shock to the Mestizo and Criollo pastors. Hickman wrote, at the end of 1966, the membership had grown to 3,480 full members. Of this number, 2,227 or 61% were Aymara speaking, and 1,253 or 36% were Castilian speaking. The church had grown by 1,047 or 43% in just two years from between 1964 and 1966, but 87% of this growth came from the Aymara people and only 13% from the Castilian speaking people. And then this damning statement by the researcher Hickman, quote, Only one member of the Aymara people is a Bolivian member of the general meeting. The others come from Spanish-speaking middle class. Did you get that? Only one indigenous person had a vote at the General Assembly of 1966, despite the indigenous representing 61% of the IMB membership. And so the stage is set for confrontation. There's an indigenous growing majority chafing from their lack of inclusion in leadership and decision making. There's the U.S., South American, and Bolivian Criollo pastors in Leyte who, in their heart of hearts, don't have anything against the indigenous, except they just felt that the indigenous weren't ready, educated, or trained for leadership. And to be honest, they were in a big hurry to train them. Something had to change. 